everyone. My name is Alison Woodall and I'm a relocation specialist. That means I get to help you with the financial, logistical and emotional issues that make moving to a new state so stressful. And today I am so excited because I am talking to Deborah Miller and she is a realtor in Payson, Arizona. Deborah, welcome. Thank you, Alison. It's wonderful to be able to be here and excited to tell our story about moving here to Payson. Well, wonderful. So now you're not a Payson native. You were born in California. How long have you lived in in Payson? In March, it'll be four years. Wow. And what was it that made you leave California for Payson? Um, Kind of forced retirement, but um, just the realization that if we really wanted um, quality uh, retirement, uh, that Payson, you know, offered us a great opportunity Um, Our friends had moved here two years prior, and we came to visit them, looked at the market at that time, which had a little bit more inventory than we do today. And on the fourth day, we saw a house and said, I guess we're moving to Payson. And we we haven't looked back. Within, we saw the house, put an offer in, 30 days later, we were in Payson to the total surprise of uh, all my family (laughs) still in California. Well, whenever I coach people about moving, I always say you have to have a moving date that's close. Maybe 30 days is, that's that's challenging. I actually left California in eight days from making the decision to hitting the road, which was ridiculous. But if when you have that date that you know you've got to move, you just figure out a way to make it happen and everything happens much faster and you're exhausted during the experience, but then when you're living that amazing life, it makes it all worthwhile. So, so tell me a little bit. I don't know exactly where Payson is. So where, where is Payson in, in Arizona and what is so wonderful about your town? Um, when you think of Arizona, you think of desert. And we were totally surprised. You come out of Phoenix uh, 90 minutes um, uphill to the mountains. We're at 5,000 foot elevation. And uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous ponderosa pines all around you and we're called the heart of Arizona because we are right smack dab in the middle of Arizona and we're 90 minutes south of Flagstaff and you know Prescott is to the west of us and New Mexico is off to the right off to the east and um, what makes it so wonderful to be up here is I'm from the beach area in California and we always wanted to go to the mountains and we never got up to Big Bear or Tahoe or anything like that. So when we came up here, um, it didn't take much convincing that um, it's just God's country up here. Um, The surrounding trees and the air, the air quality is fantastic up here. And I love the seasons. We get all four seasons. We get you know, a little snow in in winter, like Wednesday, we're expecting like five inches of snow. We haven't seen that pretty much all winter, just a little bit. And then in the summer, we get warm. Everybody goes, oh my gosh, it gets so hot. Well, it got hot in California too. Um, We don't get to like 117, like the Valley does. We get, we get in the nineties. Spring is absolutely gorgeous. The weather is fantastic. Uh, And fall, um, I love it too, because we do get the change of um, the trees, you know, the fall colors and, and again, just that crispness in the air. So um, it, like I said, when we came up the hill, it didn't take much convincing. It was like, oh my gosh, you come out of that desert and just see these gorgeous, um, this rim country, these hills just surround you. Um, We love it. And the people, um, it's an old town. It started out as a mining town and a sawmill town, ranchers. We've got, you know, a rodeo up here that's the longest running rodeo in the United States. And it's not the biggest, that's for sure. It's a small town, but it's the longest running rodeo. And the families get so excited about it. And I just like that small town feel when you go to a community event, um, the town turns out it's 
my roots are from Kansas. My parents were from Kansas in a very small town. And when we go back to visit, it just amazed me how these community picnics and everything, um, there's just so much participation with the town and you get to meet so many people. And everybody's, for the most part, um, are very open, very kind, very willing to help you find your way around. And in Payson, that's not too hard because everything's like three to six minutes away. Well, perfect. Well, I was going to ask you, so so you said you're like 90 minutes from Phoenix. So if, if someone's looking for that small town feel, but they still need maybe an airport or you, know, you can presumably get reasonably easily to a big city if you needed to. We're, um, we have a small municipal airport and then, but it's, yeah, an hour and 10 minutes to Phoenix uh, airport and um, very easy. If you need shopping, uh, if you're a shopaholic, <laughs> Payson is not, you know, your cup of tea. But when I need something, uh, I love that break of just running down to the city. And after spending half a day down the city, I'm like, I want to go home. I, you know, I don't want the traffic and we're spoiled up here. We do get holiday traffic and such, but um, nothing like in the big cities. And I used to spend hours and hours on the freeways in Southern California, getting to and from work. And here I come to work. It takes me four minutes to get to work. Um, it's wonderful. Um, and that's the thing as far you as you shopping, think we've got all your basic necessities. And I think what a lot of fellow Californians um, have expressed to me uh, at the longer they live here is they've learned to live a little bit simpler. You know, you don't need the mall every weekend. Um, you get involved in community events and volunteering. Um, and it's just a different quality of life. It's, it's not that hustle and bustle. Um, you can be as busy as you want, but most choose to finally enjoy the outdoors, kayaking, hiking, um, fishing, you know, the, the guys love it up here because there's car shows. Um, a lot of uh, old car collectors up here, um, they love to fish, they love to hunt. And the ladies, um, I've gotten a group together from uh, friends from California. And now I have the opportunity to do ladies at lunch, you know, and um, we get to share stories of our time in California and and such. Um, but up here, um, it, it's just a simpler life. You, you've got your basic necessities of grocery stores, um, your Home Depot, your Walmart, um, no fancy lady clothing stores. Um, we do a lot of thrift shopping, uh, which um, has been a lot of fun. A lot of quality stuff in these thrift stores, because um, we run the gamut up here of very high-end homes and very moderate homes. And so um, we like um, the ladies that are in the higher end that uh, donate to our thrift stores. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, if, if you're an hour and 10 minutes away from Phoenix, that that's for some people, I mean, I, I lived in the Central Valley, that's a short, you know, that's a, a daily commute to work time. And yes. so if you know that you, you're that close to a big city, should you need it, then you can make do with you know the basics in a town because you've got that lifestyle. So obviously, from what you said, you're very well set up for someone who has a little bit more time on their hands. There's lots of outdoor activities. What would happen, you know, if, if you've got younger kids? You know, what are schools like? Um, and are there any colleges, or would would that be you know going to Phoenix or to one of the bigger towns? You would um, for colleges. It's um, ASU or University at Flagstaff. And so the kids are close to home. There's a lot of families where um, their children have moved on to college and they stay down in the valley, but they're close to home. You know, on the weekend, they can come back and see mom and dad and the rest of the family. Um, as far as the younger children, uh, our schools are smaller. We have six schools, um, and Payson High School is. I would say 
on the scale across in the United States and in Arizona, we're considered a moderate school just because we are so small. And, um, but I know several of the instructors, teachers at the high school, and they're just wonderful people. They just really care about these kids. And a lot of the kids get involved in, instead of getting into um, uh, trouble up here, <laughs> they get into 4-H, they learn to work with animals, um, but that's for city folk, that may not be their cup of tea, but lots of sports, you have all your sports up here. You have soccer, you have baseball, you have football. Um, I don't know if we have tennis, but um, anyway, it's, um, yeah. the kids seem to love it up here. One of the things that impressed us when we moved up here, one of the first stores we went into, um, I was walking in and this young man ran ahead of me, opened the door and said, after you, ma'am. And I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> A lot of manners up here. The families are very strong. And um, I, I love the, that they have the opportunity to experience the outdoors as well as in-class learning. Well, wonderful. Well, so it's obviously beautiful and you've got everything everybody needs. Let's talk about your real estate market. So I'm guessing if, if it's this beautiful, because you've certainly sold it to me, and if you bought a house so quickly, it's obviously a beautiful area to move to. What is your market like right now? Do you have much inventory? Do you have multiple office situation? Kind of what is it like? Our market really changed when COVID hit and it really um, became a desire, uh, even more desirable area to move to since people were working from home. A lot of times um, in the earlier days, Payson was primarily at um, retirement and uh, second home place to come. Now people are saying, no, I want to live there year round the, um, because they can work from home. Uh, our inventory is pretty low right now just because every real estate agent has people waiting in the wings, um, primarily out of California. But we have East Coasters, too, wanting to get out of the snow, the weather, the environment um, in the big cities. So when homes come up, uh, we're still considered moderately priced. Uh, it had, the market has increased over the last year <clears throat> just because of the desirability up here. So I do have a lot of Californians that are waiting for a home right now that uh, they're like, whoa, you know, how come you're not finding me a home, you know? And I'm like, okay, I'm on. The um, real estate listing, six in the morning. I go on again at 10, I go on at two and go on before I go to bed. And when something comes up, just be assured that I've got your parameters of what you're looking for. I'll get on the phone with you or I'll email you and say, okay, what do you think? You know, do you want me to go preview this home for you? And I will do that. I go video the homes so that, cause that's a long way to come for like maybe one house that has come on the market. And so pictures that are on listings, a lot of times are very deceiving. And so I go out to the property and I say, you know, I do a video of the neighborhood kind of thing. And so that you can get the full perspective before making that trip out. Um, but I do recommend there have been people who have bought sight unseen. And um, I don't recommend that, you know, come out, experience the town and, um, you know, come out for a, a long weekend or such and really get a feel for it. And I'm, I'm really pleased that a lot more people are doing that. They're coming, they're saying, okay, I want to buy within six months. So I'm going to make like three trips out and try and experience a couple of seasons before, you know, I decide to buy. And um, we didn't do that, but um, we just acclimated. Um, you know, we said, oh, wow, we haven't, I've never been through a monsoon before. And um, the excitement of um, lightning and rain and all of that is, is great. But our market, um, 
We have high-end homes. If you want to be in a golf community, we have two absolutely gorgeous um, golf communities, and we do have a public golf course also. As far as the average home price right now, we're about at 450 for a three-bedroom, two-bath on a you know 0.18 acre uh, kind of thing, and so you can go the spectrum. Uh, we don't have a lot of low-priced homes uh, right now in town. A lot of our just local workers are needing those kind of homes, so uh, they're pretty fast on on catching these homes, and uh, so. I just recommend that you be pre-qualified um, before you even start looking so that you're not disappointed when, you know, you've got this beautiful home you've picked out and your lender says, oh, it's a little over your budget. But we really have uh, some great lenders up here that will work with you to get you the best rates possible. We are experiencing a little bit of, um, increase in interest rates, but with good credit in that, uh, the lenders are really trying to keep those low. And we're open to um, any of the veterans. This town loves veterans. And so we welcome you um, to town. We have um, a wonderful, several organizations that will help veterans um, get through the process. And, um, but I do um, encourage you to come and, and see us and s come and see me. Um, I work really hard for my clients and um, I know it's, uh, moving is stressful no matter where you go. And, but um, I really try and take that stress, some of that stress away from you. And, you know, I'll give you the resources that you need to, you know, find tradesmen or whatever. Some people are choosing to build, I will say, um, real estate, land real estate is um, really shrinking here because we're surrounded by the national forest. So land is really becoming at a premium. And, uh, um, but and what are, what are your an tax exciting market? What are your tax rates, like your property taxes? Are they, are they higher or do you have an, a, a, is it, I mean, does it change depending on whereabouts you are in Payson? It does. Um, in some of the golf communities, your property taxes are higher, but on the national average, we are lower than um, the national average. We're about 0.62 and national average is 1.07. So when we moved here and got our first tax bill, I go, oh, this can't be right. You know, I mean, it was half of what we had in California. Your um, car registrations, uh, that really got us excited. We registered two vehicles for five years for what we used to register one vehicle for one year. Um, gas prices are less. Um, of course, that's all dependent on what's happening across the United States, um, but uh, we're significantly lower than California. Um, and I, I do recommend that everybody do their due diligence uh, and I'll help you any way I can to get that information to you. Um, you just send me your list of questions. What's this, what's this? And a lot of people say, okay, what churches, what schools, what, you know, um, shopping and whatever, I'm, I'm happy to get all that for you. And, um, but you can, like you said, a run down the hill to a concert to, you know, your favorite play or uh, real fine dining. We do have some nice restaurants up here, um, but a lot of people like to be in the city and have the excitement of going to dinner and a show. And so you just make a, an evening of it, of yeah. going down to the valley. Well, I, and, I always like to be close to a big city, uh, mainly for me, my parents are still in England. So I always ask about airports because I need to know that my parents can get to me wherever I'm living. But I know for a lot of Californians, they want to, they still have family there. So having an airport that they can get back to California quickly and relatively cheaply, that just makes that initial move just a little bit easier. And I mean, I, I live Northeast of Atlanta and in traffic, I'm only, 
gosh, I'm only probably 50 miles out of Atlanta. It'll take me longer than an hour and 10 minutes to, <laughs> to get to Atlanta. Yet I'm, you know, I don't have any of the beauty that you get in, you know, in Payson. So, so that's great to know. Anything else you want to cover before you tell everybody how they can contact you? I just want to, um, you know, preface everything that, um, I, it doesn't matter where you move to, um, know that it's not going to be California. It's not going to be your East Coast cities or whatever. Um, be patient with the people. Uh, we're small town and a lot of people are moving, Tennessee, Alabama, you know, all kinds into small rural towns because they want that feel. Um, but you're so used to be on that fast track of California. And when you come into a town, just know everybody wants to help you. And, but it just may take a little bit longer to get <laughs> a tradesman or something like that. And I ask that people just embrace the, the beauty here and, and the people and live life simpler. Uh, it's, it's a joy. Yeah. I always think that the first year when you move somewhere is just an adventure because that first month or two, you're just in chaos, trying to get used to everything, trying to find out where you go to get your hair done, to buy with you know the things that you like to eat, figure out the contractors and all of that. And yes. then you're like, okay, so do I like this town? Is this actually fun? And then you kind of, you know, there can be small frustrations, but then you, once you've gone through that whole year, you've got used to the weather, you've got used to the lifestyle, you're fully settled. And then you know whether you really, really love that place. And so don't, I would say, if you think you don't like someone somewhere after the first few months, don't judge it, you've got to give it a year. Even for me, we just moved back to the house that we lived in for 15 years. But mm -hmm. we spent the last four years traveling. So we're in a different place in our life. And even though I've come back to the exact community that I loved, it's still taken me four months to get settled back into our house and to adjust to, to lie in my, you know, me being different in the same community. And so mm -hmm. it is, it is it, it, like you say, it's just patience. It's just accepting a different pace of life and that's what you moved for so mm -hmm. embrace it well perfect yeah. so if someone wants to contact you what is the best way to contact you best way is to text me initially uh, 928-978-1199 or you can email me at deborah d-e-b-o-r-a-h miller m-i-l-l-e-r cells payson at gmail.com okay perfect and then i'll link i'll put all of the links um in the wherever you're watching this video in the notes so that you can get in contact with deborah anything else i you you saw payson on me on payson i, I can't oh. wait to come visit <laughs> um it payson is hard to describe but i recommend uh, another site to jump on is discover gila g-i-l-a county.com and it shows you all the communities surrounding here. Um, we have uh, lovely towns just outside of Payson and um, it shows you all the activities that you can do, the, what work is available, jobs, schools, all of that. And it's just a great site to go to and you can get a good feel for uh, what Payson is all about. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that wonderful information with us. And I hope everybody is going to get in contact with you. Well, thank you for having me, Alison.